Okay, we're back. We're live. Energy 808, uh, the cutting edge, exciting on, on a Monday at noon. And we have Mina Morita. She joins us by VoIP. That's Voice Over Internet Protocol from Kauai. Am I right about that, Mina? You are in Kauai, aren't you? Uh, I'm sitting at home in Hanalei Valley, Kauai. <laughs> ah, we wish you, we were there with you. We'll, we'll have to engineer a show where we all go to Kauai and sit with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, we could sit in the backyard and uh, enjoy the view. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My wife is from Kauai. I, I, know, I know exactly what you mean. So anyway, so um, the last time I saw you, which was only two weeks ago, was at the Energy Policy uh, Forum Steering Committee meeting under uh, Sherilyn Wee, the, uh, the, new, the new leader, if you will, of the Energy Policy Forum. Yeah. And that's why we're going to talk about the Energy Policy Forum today. Um, it's, it's, there's a certain um, new, new departure going on, and I thought we'd take at least part of this show, I Mina, to talk about the origins of the Energy Policy Forum uh, back in 2002. That's 16 years ago. And you were there. You were one of the founding members. Uh, I really want, I to, I want <laughs> to hear the story. Can you tell us the story? Well, I, um, so the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum started in... Um, 2002, and it was, um, I think, originally funded by Hawaii Electric Company, uh, giving a grant to the Social Science Institute at the University of Hawaii uh -huh. to, do, to do this collaborative experiment in bringing stakeholders um, together to develop energy policy. And um, I, I think the forum has always had about oh, 30 to 40 um, participants. And it was a real critical time because um, the energy situation in Hawaii needed to be examined closely. Um, and there wasn't any real con energy constituency out there. Mm -hmm. You know, basically, you had the electric utility and um, people suspect, <laughs> especially of Hawaiian Electric, because Hawaiian Electric um, had some major issues um, that were being challenged um, on different islands. Oh, For yeah, example, wasn't there? There was Wahila Ridge which was a, yeah. a big uh, controversy over a power line over that ridge. And that was, that was right. happening at the same time, wasn't it? Right. So you basically had Bahila Ridge. You had um, the Keohole plant on the Big Island, mm -hmm. uh, on the west side of Hawaii, uh, Hawaii being built. Mm -hmm. And on um, Maui, um, um, I recall it so slow, um, they were looking at building new power generation in the, um, I think it was the Ma'alaya area, mm -hmm. uh, which the community opposed and wanted um, more focus on renewable generation at that time. Mm -hmm. And so this was this was in the late 1990s. So uh, basically on three islands, you had major... Um, um, challenges for for um, Hawaiian Electric and its subsidiaries, uh -huh. um, and opposition by by the public, and especially with Bahila Ridge, where um, you know several key legislation on overhead lines um, um, were being proposed. You know, and uh, and the other big issue on. Um, Oahu was the uh, um, uh, Kamoku Pukele mm -hmm. um, trans transmission line, so which is somewhat related to Vahila too. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, power so, power has always been a, a challenge. You know, I I got here um, in um, the fall of um, 1965. That's when I got here. And um, mm -hmm. one of the big things that really was interesting was the Big Island 
um, about half of it, the southern half of the Big Island, had no power. No power. <laughs> yeah, and, and and that was in the um, early, again, the 90s, where um, uh, they had rolling blackout, uh, rolling brownout uh, on on the Big Island. Yeah. And, and that was something else that, um, you know, had stirred the pot earlier. And, you know, I, I believe it was one of the reasonings why they were looking at the, um, the uh, building the Keohole power plant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the Energy Policy Forum gets in there. And, and um, I guess, correct me, but uh, the big issue at the outset was, uh, is there room in this landscape for renewable energy, uh, for green energy, um, yes or no? Should we do anything in green energy or should we not do anything in green energy? Am I right about that? Right. I mean, I, you know, the importance of the um, Energy Policy Forum is you were bringing together um, a larger group, stakeholders, um, together to define um, a common vision for energy as we move forward, you know, rather than um, just participating through the um, utility IRP process or something like that, you mm -hmm. know. Um, mm -hmm. how, how, how do we get people on board to work towards a common vision? Yeah, and, and people, <clears throat> people includes uh, an awful lot of stakeholders. Uh, she was saying before the show, the forum has always had 30, 40, at one point almost 50 stakeholders, but the stakeholders are very diverse. Um, you, get, yeah. you get the uh, refineries have been a stakeholder for, uh, since the beginning. You get the utility. Uh -huh. um, you get activist groups have been stakeholders. You get industry in general. Um, right. uh, go ahead. I mean, there are more. I know there are more, uh, and they're, they're from right. every right. walk of it, life. It, it, well, you know, in this, you know, you had renewable energy developers um, as part of the uh, independent power producers group. Um, you know, like you said, there were there were um, community activists that wanted to see a different vision for Hawaii, and you know, because of our energy system in Hawaii and how the refineries were. Um, Develop them, why they were developed, and their the what dictated their output. I mean, that was a careful, um, synergistic sort of system that you have to approach carefully because you know you you do one thing, um, you might have unintended consequences. So all of these issues have to be thought out in a real careful, deliberative um, way, as well as um, controlling costs as you, as you move forward. So I, I saw the forum as a, um, not only bringing together these important um, diverse interests in defining a common um, energy vision, but also um, making sure that the information you had was um, well-developed, based in fact, uh, um, good economic pra practices as well as environmental practices. Yeah, so I, I think even from the outset, it was, it was a forum in the fullest sense. Um, uh -huh. And from the outset and even now today, it's, uh, it's actually, um, it's, it's, um, embedded in the University of Hawaii in the Public Policy Center, uh, as it should be, because this is a very important area of public policy. You know, the idea yeah. the idea is you have to bring everybody together on something that affects everybody. There's nobody who's exempt from the effect of public policy on energy. We are all touched by it, sometimes <coughs> profoundly, a business and residential all, all alike. So that was that was really interesting. Now, just just to dwell on on you for a minute, uh, you were in the legislature at the time. 
I was the chairman of the um, Energy and Environmental Protection Committee. And, you know, in the early, the first couple of years of my committee, it was really hard because there wasn't um, a cohesive energy voice out there. And there was so much to learn. And, and so, you know, the, the, the reports that were developed, the, the viewpoints that were um, agreed upon by the Hawaii Energy Policy was really instrumental in taking the first step towards um, a cleaner energy future. Yeah. You know, it, it was, we, you know, we, it as, the, um, you know, we mentioned earlier, this was a collaborative effort. And so a lot of stuff was consensus building. And um, so people might see this as baby steps, but these were very fundamental baby steps moving forward. Yeah. And, and you, can't, you can't only see it in light of turning around and looking back. You have to see it in light of the way things were at the time. There was not a whole yeah. lot of photovoltaic out there. Uh, there wasn't a no. lot of green energy out there. Uh, we no, were... there, you know, basically you had the electricity as, as the monopoly calling all the shots. Mm -hmm. And um, you hardly had any independent power producers at that time, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, and so it, it really was a key way to look at um, energy issues comprehensively. And, you know, like one of the first things that the policy forum did was try to identify all the barriers in um, moving uh, towards, a, towards clean energy. Um, you know, one of the things that we had to do as a stakeholder group in um, uh, describing um, our common vision was to make sure that our um, vocabulary was consistent, that when we talked about certain ideals or concepts that, you know, we were talking about the same thing. So a lot, a lot of stuff we did was fundamental, but early on, um, I think one of the major issues that they did was find out what are the barriers um, and, and really delving into the taxation and regulatory um, construct of, of energy. Yeah, and, and, and um, just, to, uh, just to take a look at, <laughs> at those times at the landscape in which this happened, the PUC in those days was simply re regulating the utility um, uh -huh. and energy that you bought for your house was, was being generated for the most part, nearly all, by, um, by, by uh, diesel oil. Um, and uh, there, was, there was really not a whole lot that the PUC was doing in those days to deal with the possibility of green energy. Um, and it, it, it was... It was it, it was as it had been for a hundred years. Uh, everything was still kind of a hundred years old. Uh, and for that matter, the utility company was about a hundred years old too. Uh, <laughs> so we were still living in another <laughs> chapter back in those times. But what I, th what I think is worth mentioning is that deep in the culture of the Energy Policy Forum, as it was established 16 years ago, uh, is the notion of consensus. Um, you were there. Can yeah. you talk about that? Yeah. So, um, you know, consensus building is awfully hard. I mean, you have to go in and build consensus. And part of that building of consensus is educating people. So, you know, bringing in diverse viewpoints, having um, the, uh, the, these critical con discussions, because if we didn't achieve consensus, the issue wouldn't move forward. And, and that, and so that actually has worked over the years. I mean, that happened to be an inspired design point. You could say, well, we could have votes. We could make resolutions and vote for them and, and see what the majority feel in a voting environment. But the forum never did that. The forum always held on to the notion is, yes, 
we can be friends. We may disagree and we try to convince each other of, of a given proposition, um, but we don't need to actually have a vote. I always, when I came into it, which was, oh gosh, in the late, the late, well, I guess around 2008 or nine, um, uh, I, I was really uh, amazed that that could happen. I mean, you wonder about consensus. People criticize Hawaii for too much seeking consensus. But in fact, it has worked, hasn't it? It has worked. And, and I think, you know, especially for um, these kinds of issues, which are multifaceted and, and, and uh, very complex, I mean, it really takes effort from people who, who may not have um, um, the same views to, at the end, come together and say, yes, I can live with this. And it's all a it's all a function of good good faith and goodwill, and in the same yeah. in the same notion, you know, we're going to take a one minute break now. That's Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC and a founding member of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. We'll be right back, and we'll go further into modern times after this break. Hey, Stan, the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff, but I really like energy stuff, so I'm gonna keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stand Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're gonna talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're gonna definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Hi, I'm Dave Stevens, the uh, host of Cyber Underground. Uh, every Friday here at 1 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. And then every episode is uploaded to the Cyber Underground, that library of shows that you can see of mine on youtube.com. And uh, I hope you'll join us here every Friday. We have some topical discussions about why security matters and what could scare the absolute bejesus out of you if you just try to watch my show all the way through. Hope to see you next time on the Cyber Underground. Stay safe. Okay, okay we're back. We're live on uh, Energy, uh, Energy 808, the cutting edge here on ThinkTech on Mondays at noon. And our special guest is Mina Morita. She's actually a co-host of this show. And she's a former chair of the PUC. And more than that, uh, she, she was the uh, chair of the Energy uh, Committee in, in the uh, State House for many years. And she was a founder of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum in 2002, when we're ruminating about that now. Um, and during the break, you know, we're talking about going down memory lane, how interesting it is to look back and, and see yourself in the context of historical events which happened over the past 16 years, Mina? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of people, this is such inside baseball, though. <laughs> you know, <laughs> a lot of people don't know, um, you know, the, the backstory to, to, you know, how, how some of these legislation was formed and, and the reason behind it and stuff. And yeah, there's a lot of backstory here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm saying, I was saying during the break that, you know, a, a lot of the, our progress, and we have had progress, we had remarkable pro progress during the period from then till now, um, was a function of the fact that you were there. Uh, you were a member, a founding member of the forum, and at the same time, you were the chair of the Energy Committee in the, in the, in the House. Um, this, this had to have a huge effect on both sides of that equation. It helped the forum because they had, uh, you know, a, a, um, a person in the House who sympathized with them, um, a kind of uh, advocate, uh, uh, a kind of um, oh, uh, uh, a connection. And then on, on, the, on the House side, um, the House had you sitting on the forum. Uh, which was an educational experience for everyone um, and which was an organization trying to deal in, you know, evidence-based uh, public policy. So, wow, what, a, what a, you were the greatest connection they could have had. It must have been interesting. No, to... you, know, you know what? I, I, at that time, the legislature was just one part of a, a larger um, kind of system, ecosystem that had people in key places that 
we're moving the ball in the same direction. Um, myself at the legislature and on the Senate side, we had um, Senator Kalani English that was instrumental too. Um, you in the state energy office, we had Maurice Kaya, who you know has been putting heart and soul into Oh yeah, energy very office. instrumental in development of energy in Hawaii, yeah. Maurice Kaya. And then, and then on the research and development side, you had someone someone like Rick Roshlo, um, who now was coordinating all of the, 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 the research monies that were being coming to the state, and a lot of it was earmarked through Senator Inouye at that time, mm -hmm. but really thinking strategically on how this research money um, should be spent. And, and, and so you had, and then, you know, you also had Carlito Calaboso at he in the Lingo Administration for a while mm -hmm. that was really uh, willing to delve into some really um, thorny um, uh, regulatory issues. Yeah, he was your predecessor but, on the PUC, yeah. Yeah, and, and so, you know, it wasn't just me and the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, but all of us together, you know, um, research monies, energy policy through the state energy office, um, uh, you know, my counterpart on the Senate side, um, the, the PUC willing to delve into some um, regulatory issues. All of this was in play at the same time, and and it was it was very exciting. Oh yeah, what's interesting is that the people you just named, and we'll touch some more of them. Um, you know, largely they're still around. They're still involved um, in maybe in different roles <laughs> in energy. In different roles, and we were all members of the Energy Policy Forum. Yeah, it has been the center. But let's take a moment and mm -hmm. talk about Sharon Moriwaki and Mike Hamnett. You were there when they uh -huh. got to be uh, the co-chairs, I mean successfully the co-chairs of the Energy Policy Forum. How did that happen? Uh, what was the uh, you know a series of events that led to their involvement as, as co-chairs? I think... I, I again, you know, I wasn't a founding um, person of the organization. I just was a, a a member that participated since the beginning. But I I believe the story is that Hawaiian Electric approached um, Mike um, and said, you know, we got to look at how we develop energy policy differently. And um, and how we can engage better. And as you know, we talked about before, Hawaiian Network was under the gun, right, with um, all of these controversial projects on every single island, uh, almost uh, throughout their system, uh, the service service territory. Um, you know, being uh, opposed. Um, and, and, and so they were looking for a better to, way to work with um, the community and uh, stakeholders yeah. in, the, in the development of energy policy. So I believe they went to Social Science Institute um, with funding and a proposal and say, going to Sharon and Mike and, you know, help us help us do uh, policy differently, the development of policy differently. And, and that developed it into the Hawaii Energy Policy Yeah, Forum. And, and the rest is uh, history. I mean, so many events, so many things, so many companies that came and went, some of them went, uh, so many uh, initiatives, so much legislation, uh, so much vetting of legislation over the, uh, these past 16 years. And then, and then Sharon decides she wants to run for office, and she runs for the <laughs> state senate. <laughs> I guess she couldn't resist it. She's really a perfect senator, in my opinion. Um, and she won the primary, and now she's looking for the general election. And she's no longer, she can no longer be 
uh, the, the co-chair of the Energy Policy Forum. So we are in a new chapter. Can you describe how that is evolving, Mina? So um, the, um, I guess, Social Science Institute went out um, looking for a new, uh, new conveners for the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And um, uh, recently, hired um, Sherilyn uh, Wee, um, who I believe she's an economist by profession. She's a PhD she, economist, yes. Yeah, and she, for a short time, worked for the Consumer Advocates Office. Yes. And, and is now is back at the University of Hawaii. Yeah. So um, I, I think her position is part-time convener for the Hawaii P Energy Policy Forum, and and she also teaches. Yeah, she's a, she's a, a member of the faculty there. Yeah. Um, right. So this, this is and and I suppose that was the case with Sharon Moriwaki, who was uh, had a law degree right. and, a, and a degree in uh, public policy as well. Um, so it was a right. perfect fit, and this is a continuation of the same connection between the, um, the right. convener, if you will, and, and, and the Public Policy Center. Uh, and I guess the uh -huh. chair of the Pu Public Policy Center now these days is our, our old friend, uh, Colin Moore, who we've had on the show many uh -huh. times and who is an, uh, an expert on Hawaii public policy and politics. So uh, yeah. there have been meetings. Uh, this is going forward. Uh, the standard mm, calendar pattern over the past several years that I'm aware of has been a, a legislative briefing for the members of the legislator, legislature interested in energy in January, just before the session starts every year, every single year, mm -hmm. and also an energy day program in the summertime uh, to uh, uh, bring out the, the, uh, the community and have the community uh, brief the public on what is going on. Mm -hmm. And both, and both mm -hmm. of those are an opportunity to, to gather and, and to exchange ideas. And finally, there's been a lot of outreach, which I think is a, a, a significant, a central part of the Energy Policy Forum, as it has been for a long time, including uh, you know, making of movies uh, on network TV, uh, making of these talk shows with us for several years, where we introduce uh, members of the community, the energy community to each other, and have them share ideas, um, and we have them uh, you know, reveal their thoughts and uh, their points of view uh, to the public in general. And I think it's really been very valuable. Uh, so the question is, where, where does it go from here in terms of these, these, you know, these initiatives that the Policy Forum has been interested in, uh, including vetting of bills, by the way, uh, over all these years? Where, where does it look like it's going to you, Mina? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's why the, the forum is meeting um, in another month and to have this discussion with um, its members. Um, you know, we have new leadership now and as with everything else, you know, you, you have to kind of relook your, um, your objectives um, and, and kind of reevaluate um, the organization, and we will be going through that process, um, like I said, in in about a month. Yeah, and I, and I think that and I think that's really healthy, because not not especially the energy situation in Hawaii, nothing is static. And um, you know, I, I just want to point out, you know, just just a small thing, you know, for over a decade, um, you know, our our focus has been on renewable energy, but when we talk about renewable energy, it's so limiting. You know, um, you know, we forget all of the other uh, components to an energy ecosystem that are just as important. And 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 so I think this is a good time to, you know, have those kinds of discussions about, you know, how do we move forward and and. Think about energy in broader terms mm. because, you know, no matter what, you know, the ultimate goal is um, uh, emissions um, reduction. 
you know, and 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 definitely renewable energy plays an important role in that. But there are other ways um, that also lend itself to emissions reduction, and we have to be aware of all of these components and act on all of these components, and not one single, not not not. Not be focused on one single um, issue, thinking yeah. it's the panacea. Yeah, well, you and know. as you said before, um, you know, it, it's always in change, and uh, the world yeah. is always in change. The economy is always in change. The way we live together in these islands, whether we realize it or not, it's always in change. And so, energy must uh, it must be evaluated and reevaluated from a public policy point of view all the time so we can invent uh, and test and invent the best possible uh, arrangement for energy and therefore the economy. Anyway, I'll, I'll be there with you, Mina, watching and participating and yeah. enjoying the delicious issues that come up uh, in and with the Energy <laughs> Policy Forum. And in any event, I'll see you two weeks from today where we will continue this discussion. Hopefully, Mina, uh, rather we'll, uh, hopefully we'll have Marco uh, back again, and it will be Marco, Mina, and me, uh, or Mina, Marco, and me, <laughs> for more of the same. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mina Marita. Great. Aloha. Thank you, Jake. Take care. Aloha. Aloha.